Hello, Steve White, Trekboy89 for Steve Arts 89 Well, another article from trekmovie.com, um, which used to be the site I always went to, um, but they sold out the fans about a decade ago to Shill for Paramount and CBS, um, so I haven't really paid any attention to them. But um, they did an article today, um, and, well, this is not news. CBS All Access to be rebranded as Paramount Plus in early 2021. Now, we knew this was happening... Um, because basically they got smart enough to realize no one really knows or cares about CBS outside of America, whereas Paramount is a global brand. And if they want to have a global platform and compete with um, other streamers like Netflix and um, Hulu and all those ones, they need something more recognizable. So, And this is quite clever. I like this. Paramount Plus, live sports, breaking news, a mountain of entertainment. You know, because the logos are mountains. That's pretty good. Um... Now, what will this mean for Star Trek? Well, um, if they if they throw a lot of money into this, they're going to fund a lot of Star Trek projects, even if they have no merit. So that's a bad thing. We may actually see atrocities like Section 31 being actually made. Now, Strange New Worlds could be good. I'm actually all for that. Um, Picard Season 2, I just... It's just... It's, it's just... Renegades, it shouldn't, it, it's not Star Trek. Um, Discovery Season 4, well, God, please no. But Strange New Worlds, there's some hope they're at least trying to be Star Trek on that show, um, in theory, from what they've said and from what they did with Pike on Discovery Season 2. But the rest of it, um, Lower Decks is getting a little bit better. They're laughing less at Star Trek and laughing more at situations within Star Trek, which is a bit more um, respectful to the shows and the fans and the characters are not quite as obnoxious. They still have the same issues that they have since the first episode, but they've gotten almost watchable by episode six. So a little bit of hope there with those two, and that's being incredibly optimistic. But um, it's hopefully... I mean, they still have the contract issues with Secret Hideout, but once that's done with, they should be more free to make real Star Trek again in theory because they shouldn't have any of the licensing issues that come with those contracts with um, Secret Hideout and stuff. So long term, if they're part of like this umbrella sort of brand and streaming service that needs content and doesn't really care about ratings, um, they're more likely to make Star Trek. It's, it's sort of like when Star Trek went from networking to syndication in the 80s. It, it got a sort of breath of fresh air and some freedom and streaming is sort of going to do that as well. Streaming should have done it, um, but um, once they screwed over Netflix, they ran, it, ran into money problems with the current Star Trek. But, because they sort of, I think they kind of gave um, CBS All Access all they were going to give it, and once they sort of realised, A, it's not working, and B, we're going to rebrand anyway, they kind of left Star Trek to sort of fend for itself a bit, and they had some funding issues. They had to go to Amazon and... Um, I think it will change things for the better in theory with production, but um, not while Kurtzman's involved. But I think long term it could be very good for Star Trek, but um, not short term. Now it's interesting that um, in Australia, one of our channels, Channel 10, was bought by CBS, and now we have 10 All Access, which um, is sort of like CBS All Access. So Paramount TV will be coming to Australia. So will I be able to watch? Um, Star Trek and all that on Paramount Plus. I'm guessing I will. Will it affect how, um, well, like, will I move it off Netflix and how all that will work? So that will be interesting to see how they manage that with the international audiences. Um, right now, and I sort of just realised this now and thinking about this, in the last six months or so, because I think it's been more than that since um, they bought Channel 10, we've seen a lot of changes and Star Trek has become more prominent. Star Trek had not been on TV for a while commercial TV. It used to be on Channel 7 um, and Channel 9. Channel 7 had the original series in repeats like regularly, like two nights a week, and then Channel 9 was showing Deep Space Nine and Voyager while it was live to air and then Enterprise um, regularly two nights a week and then we got down to Enterprise once a week. Um, but then once Enterprise went off the air, it kind of disappeared. Um, I would see Star Trek on uh, Foxtel. They would do a sci-fi night, uh, usually on Saturday nights. They'd repeat all the shows. Um, like, in order, original series, Next Gen, Deep Space Nine, Voyager. I never saw Enterprise showed on there, but it had just finished. I had it on DVD, I didn't notice. 
Then I lost Foxtel when I moved and I couldn't get it in the building that I'm in now because the infrastructure doesn't support it and the uh, body corporate won't allow us to actually put in the, um, the outlets so I, don't, I didn't have it. So for years I didn't have anything until streaming started to come up and I was able to bypass that with you know my phone and Chrome and stuff like that. So what I've noticed is one of the Channel 10 sh shows, because Channel 10 sort of has all these different shows um, on digital, um, sorry, channels, is 10 Bold. 10 Bold shows at least two Star Trek shows. Uh, I don't think they do it every day, but during the week, several days a week, they show at least two Star Trek shows. They were showing the original series, then the original series Next Gen, uh, and they are showing Next Gen and Deep Space Nine, and they're doing Voyager and Enterprise. Enterprise just finished its run because, you know, four seasons, it doesn't last as long as the other series. Um, and now they're starting Next Gen again. They showed it, um, Encounter at Farpoint yesterday, and today they were showing The Naked Now, which is very interesting watching The Naked Now in a pandemic and looking at um, disease and the transference, people touching each other and that. And I always thought it was so artificial how Riker moves um, Beverly's hair to touch her neck when he, like, has to get her attention. Like, he could have just touched her on the shoulder. It was very forced. But um, obviously he had to touch her skin to transfer it to her. So um, it's, it's great to see Star Trek again. The um, original series were the widescreen show, shots because I don't know if people realise it, but when they remastered Star Trek, they did all the effects in widescreen and they created a syndicated version of the show which is cropped for widescreen, but they used the full screen, which were done in widescreen, effects. When you see the DVDs and the Blu-rays, those are the widescreen effects cropped and the full widescreen. So there's two versions of Star Trek. There's the <laughs> the original full screen version with the cropped new effects and the cropped widescreen of the original show with the full original effects. So I've been enjoying watching the show because I'm getting the full effects shots, the full widescreen. And I've been screen capturing them all to compare the differences between the um, Blu-ray and DVD versions and the actual on-screen versions. And it's great to see Star Trek, the original series, in widescreen, high definition, looking amazing the way... It's just, it's just amazing. Um, next Gen, unfortunately, they're showing the old shows. And Space Nine and Voyager, we don't really have any choice because we don't have them in um, remastered high definition like Next Gen. I really wish they'd start showing the Next Gen because the old the old video versions, especially season one or two, looks so bad compared to Deep Space Nine and Voyager. Voyager looks okay. Enterprise, they had problems with that as well, if you don't realise. Um, they didn't do the show originally. They filmed it in HD, and they did the effects, though, because standard television was like 360, maybe. Um, 720 was HD then, um, so 1080 was not thought of. So some shots were rendered at 1080, effects shots, but, but the rest weren't. Um, and they didn't re-render them when they released it on Blu-ray or DVD. They just put it straight to DVD. So the original, the, the film footage of the actors is HD, but the effects in a lot of examples are SD, and you can tell the difference, and it pulls you out of it. Like watching the original series where the old effects were so... Um, they weren't as... Uh, the, the Just the, pr the process of creating them, um, the ter deterioration of film with different... Um, passes and everything, it never looked as good and it kind of pulled you out of the show and I found the animated series, when I watched that it wouldn't pull me out and that was the first inkling I had that the original FX were pulling me out but I wasn't I'd sort of gotten used to it and then when they did the remastered version, it was just so amazing, I watched it um, every weekend for like a month, like all, the first season when it was released so it's really great to see original series like this and next gen I just hope they move up to better um, video. It's disappointing watching Deep Space Nine and Voyager because it's sort of soft and it doesn't look good in today's audience, but the whole point of all this, before I start rambling about um, HD and everything, is it's just great to see Star Trek, and obviously this is the influence of CBS on Channel 10 and all the 10 networks, where they have 10 Bold showing Star Trek, two day, basically two episodes, like right now Voyager's on, it went from next gen to Voyager. So it's great to see Star Trek get so much promotion and exposure, again, on just regular TV and um, streaming, and that's basically what's going to happen um, from Paramount+. Plus. We're going to see more Star Trek. It's, while they're pushing the old, that's great, and while they're making new content, which is more like Star Trek, that's great, but in the current moment of Kurtzman Trek and Discovery and Picard, it's not a good thing because people are being exposed to this 
anti-Star Trek Star Trek, liking it, and hating the original, and being these Star Trek fans that actually hate Star Trek. It's a really weird dynamic. It's, it's almost like the Star Trek Star Wars thing of the 70s, 80s got replaced with New Trek versus Old Trek, and you've got this dynamic within the franchise, within the fan community now, instead of it being these two communities not getting along, which is something I grew up with, which was hideous. Um, and now it's sort of within Star Trek. So there's a whole lot of stuff I just end up talking about, but um, yeah, this just came out of watching Star Trek two episodes in a row um, on TV and loving that it's on every day. Um, and that people who wouldn't normally watch Star Trek or wouldn't have searched for it are finding it. Like, I've, like, a lot of people found Star Trek just through it being repeated on TV and didn't really, you know, that's how you get them. You get them when they're young. Um, so I'm feeling optimistic about Star Trek's future long-term, but immediate, Kurtzman, no. Long-term, Paramount Plus, yes, good. So I'm going to go. Feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you think. Um, and what I said about Anthony, Anthony Pascal before... Um, I just find it funny that someone who wasn't protecting gay people on their platform and on their channel before, allegedly, um, now is, this is in my other video, um, he deleted a bunch of posts of gay people defending um, themselves against homophobic people when George Takai came out on it, um, and that was a lot of articles about George Takai coming out on his trekmovie.com website, and instead of deleting the homophobic posts, they deleted the gay people defending themselves and having a go at the homophobic people. And now, of course, he's all for diversity and inclusion when he's promoting Discovery and um, Picard and everything. And I'm like, when did this start? When did he start caring about this? Oh, when it became popular. Not when, it, you know, the lingering homophobia and stuff like that was still fairly common in the media 10, 15 years ago. Now it's all about diversity and representation and, um, you know... I just really want to call that out. And I might even do a video all about that Trek movie experience. Because, um, you know, allegedly, um, you know, this guy didn't respect diversity back in the day and now he's trumpeting, trump, trumpeting it. Has he changed his tune, literally? Or is he just doing what's popular and what works and what gets, you know, clicks and support from Paramount um, and CBS for his website? Not too cynical, but that's pretty much what I think it is, allegedly. But I'm going to go. Feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe, and know what you think. Um, yeah, let me know what you think of where Star Trek's going, and what do you think of Channel 10, um, 10 Bold. If you're, not watch if you're in Australia and you're not watching it, watch it. Star Trek's on there. Thanks.